um, uh, this interaction is uh, primarily to uh, uh, understand the workflow in what we would like to term as a dry eye suite, uh, which we have tried to enhance by uh, designing and creating an application which is called as the ocular surface portal. Uh, given the fact that there are so many factors that need to be taken into consideration in the history taking of patients with dry eye, the clinical examination details and the gamut of investigations that is available to us as of today, uh, it is necessary that we streamline our approach to a patient of dry eye and therefore lies the need for a workflow. We all know that uh, dry eye is probably one of the most overdiagnosed, overtreated, and overhyped of conditions, but unfortunately, it is also the most underdocumented. Uh, it is therefore essential that we walk that extra mile, find the logic amidst the chaos, and make sure that we evaluate these patients completely, uh, which will also finally enable us to intelligently communicate with the patient. Now, what are the factors which affect this process? Well, a very busy OPD is one um, where we might resort to some shortcuts while evaluating these patients, the patient profile, whether it is the first visit or the follow-up visit of the patient. And in the end, all that we end up sometimes writing or documenting is that the patient has dry eye, is usually stable, not satisfied, feels worsening. So there's so much of variation in the way in which uh, one documents what we evaluate in one visit and it might be very different from what we do so in the next visit. There are several factors beyond the obvious which affect the process of dry eye evaluation and these include all the examination techniques that a patient is subjected to before he or she reaches the dry eye clinic. And how does this impact the dry eye evaluation? It could significantly underestimate or overestimate the signs of dry eye. And uh, these uh, wrong estimations have an impact uh, on both the clinical as well as the research um, needs of um, uh, dry eye studies. So it, I think, kind of becomes obvious that when we start evaluating these patients, we need to have a clean slate, um, no lubricant for at least half an hour prior to the initiation of dry eye tests, no use of topical steroids, and most importantly, there has to be a sequence uh, for testing these patients. Well, is there a perfect method as far as sequence of testing is concerned? There are several recommendations which tell you how to go from the non-invasive to the markedly invasive tests. But at the end of the day, it is for each of us as dry specialists to have a sequence of tests that we would like to follow in our clinic, largely mirroring what has been advocated, but at the same time ensuring that we keep following the same sequence of tests for every patient as well as for every visit. Uh, the idea of a streamlined dry eye evaluation is to ask ourselves whether we missed anything, did we capture all the relevant information at every visit. Uh, in our absence, would somebody else who looks at our documentation be able to understand what we have tried to communicate? Will we be able to mirror each other? Will we be able to mirror ourselves at different visits? which brings us to a very important question as to what are the lacunae in the current methodology that is used to document patients with dry eye uh, disease. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if we need to look at the sequence of um, testing, uh, there is no perfect method, but what we follow is we start with the history and the symptom questionnaire followed by the osmolarity and then uh, largely mirror what has been mentioned uh, by the TFOS as far as the sequence of testing is concerned. And uh, this talk will subsequently focus significantly on how we have been able to integrate the ocular surface portal, the smart application for dry eye into the entire dry eye suite that the patient uh, goes through when he or she comes for a dry eye evaluation. Uh, so the uh, ocular surface portal is an application which consists of the first module, which is the dry eye module, which is all about implementing and execution of um, a dry eye um, evaluation. It ensures 
that the routine care is provided to uh, patients of uh, dry eye as well as those centers which are equipped with advanced um, investigations uh, for uh, dry eye are also able to include uh, the specialized care in the armamentarium of the application. So what does the application do? Well, it tries and bridges the gap of the unmet need. It helps us to streamline evaluation, ensuring that we do not miss out on anything. So that reporting is uniform, ensuring that we mirror largely in our documentation. It increases the uh, possibility of collaborations between um, uh, multiple centers. Uh, it will uh, provide us with an opportunity to collect unprecedented multicentric data and most importantly, it will improve the quality of patient care. So what are the app design and features? Well, uh, the biggest highlight is that it can be used by all ophthalmologists. The only mandatory tests that it warrants are the Shermer's one wetting, the fluorescein tear breakup time and the uh, corneal staining, which is something which is accessible to all ophthalmologists, and it provides us with a significant number of output sheets, as I shall show very soon. What are the indications to use the application for a patient? Well, anyone who complains of symptoms related to dry eye, those who are diagnosed to have Sjogren's syndrome, those with corneal staining, those with a Shermer's wetting less than 10 millimeters, and others as deemed appropriate, and those for epidemiological and research purpose. Uh, examination lesions are very clearly mentioned in the application, uh, citing what each of the uh, short forms mean and how they have been uh, derived. So I shall follow this up with a self-explanatory uh, video that will show to you how exactly the application um, functions when you use it in the clinic. Let, Let us examine that. this test patient. Uh, and uh, this is how the application looks, the ocular surface portal. We have several panels and let's take a look at what each one of them has to offer. So the history panel has several questions to it. In fact, there's a total of 37, which looks like it is a lot of questions, but then these are the questions that we normally ask every patient who comes to us with complaints of dry eye. So uh, once you fill the answers appropriately, like you see here, if the patient has already been diagnosed to have Sjogren's syndrome, whether he's on medications, since how long, and which systemic medications can all be captured in the application. Beyond this, the second panel is the DEQ5, where the uh, scoring of the symptoms is done for each eye separately, and uh, the appropriate drop down is selected for each of the five questions in the DEQ5. In the dry eye mimics panel, you can enter the vision and you can also mention if there are any clinical features that are suggestive of any condition that could mimic a dry eye. The dry eye examination is the most impressive panel uh, of the application where you can actually enter the lid margin related uh, findings in the form of lid margin telangiectasia or thickening of the lid margin, which will be represented schematically. If the myobomian glands are blocked or the secretion is reduced, then the gland openings close down. If there's presence of squamous blepharitis or there's trichiasis on the nasal aspect, then that is again represented clinically. And if you have cylindrical dandruff and if the puncta are um, cauterized, then this is something that you would need to mentioned in the application. The conjunctival findings include the presence or absence of hyperemia, conjunctival colysis, limbal nodule, and of course, the extent of conjunctival staining in each of the quadrants of the conjunctiva, which is then represented schematically. The corneal findings relevant for us with respect to dry eye include staining of each of the quadrant, presence of filaments. So accordingly, we mention the extent of punctal staining, and that again gets captured very beautifully in the examination panel. In the diagnostics panel, which is a mandatory panel where the values have to be um, entered, uh, uh, these are the values for Shermer's one tear breakup and staining which we have entered and then you generate. So if you change this, say, to a different value and then you generate, then you get uh, a diagnostic sheet 
which captures the essence of what the patient has in terms of uh, the type of aqueous tear deficiency, characterizing the mybovin gland deficiency, whether there is any plus disease based on what you have entered in the history and the clinical features, what are the contributory factors, again, based on the history and what is the punctal status for each of the four puncta. And this can be printed and the dry, dry eye diagnostic sheet can be handed over to the patient. If you're referring the patient to a rheumatologist, the cornea rheumat interface sheet opens where you can enter all the, where the data gets captured from the app and you can enter, enter in whatever you wish to communicate um, to the rheumatologist with respect to HCQ screening, toxicity, clearance for cataract surgery, presence of any emergency condition which requires any emergency management and then you uh, print this sheet, it generates a customized referral letter to the rheumatologist, puts in all the data that you want to share with the rheumatologist very clearly and asks the rheumatologist for a feedback regarding the underlying uh, condition and the use of medications. Uh, the advanced investigations panels allows you to enter the values for each of these investigations that you might have access to and some which are not mentioned in the application can be entered manually. There is a prescription uh, uh, panel which can be used to generate the uh, medications that you want to prescribe to the patient along with the doctor's notes which has these pre-written uh, templates that can be used in the treatment um, regimen. And of course, you have the upload document panel where you can enter in all the uh, lab reports and the slit lamp pictures for a particular patient. You can decide whether you want to continue to edit your findings or whether you want to submit once you are sure that you have entered all the relevant data. So what else does it do? It provides you with a symptom sign trend chart. It compares previous examinations. And to summarize, it's a highly useful tool, provides you with a uniform standard reporting system, which is an extremely effective means of communicating with patient, colleagues, and rheumatologists. To register, please log on to oculusurfaceportal.in. That was in short about how the application actually works in practice. This is the sequence of testing that we follow at uh, the dry eye suite at Shankar Netralia from top to bottom, left to right. Um, this is the homepage of the Ocular Surface Portal, which you can access at oculusurfaceportal.in, of which the dry eye module is the um, uh, active application, and it also uh, includes the EPIX grading for acute chemical uh, injuries. This is a quick short video to show how we examine our patients for dry eye, where we So as far as the application is concerned, you need to know that this is a web-based application which maintains patient uh, confidentiality. The host branding is extremely minimal, gives us a scope for collaboration at this point of time it is accessible freely to one and all and the time invested uh, per patient is very minimal if you have uh, uh, fellows and optometrists to help you with the initial uh, 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 filling up of the application and the history this is what we published uh, in the indian journal of ophthalmology 
uh, this is a bird's eye view of the entire application and this is our dry eye suite at Shankar Nithalaya, which is both temperature as well as humidity uh, controlled. Uh, so with this um, uh, overview of the dry eye application, I do sincerely urge each one of you to log on to the ocular surface portal um, uh, application and make use of the dry eye module in evaluating your uh, daily uh, dry eye patients. Uh, I would like to acknowledge our technology partner as well as the entire team back home at Shankar Nitralia. And we are also glad to inform that we offer a three month short term ocular surface fellowship for anybody who might be interested in uh, the same after completion of your cornea fellowship. Thank you once again for a very patient um, hearing and for the opportunity provided. Thank you.